for the Necron Command Patrol box, I've completed Necron Warriors, I've completed Necron Destroyers. Now we're going to go with, you know, a smaller, easier to paint unit and a lot more technical unit, I think. A lot more detailed, I should say. First off in this video, we're painting the scarabs. We're going to start, do, we're going to do the scarabs, get them done. Then I'm going to jump into the Overlord, which looking at how detailed this bastard is, that's going to take a bit. It's going to take a lot more steps than I think the other ones did, or a lot more time than the other stuff that I've done did. So I might as well jump into it and start just painting the scarabs. The way I've decided to do the scarabs is going to be the easiest part of this whole combat patrol box. And it starts with the airbrush. Using Berserker Red to create my shadow from underneath, I sprayed the three sets of scarabs. Then I switched for Sanguine Scarlet and sprayed all of the top of the models with that to give it a decent base coat before applying my highlight and other colors. Not done with the airbrush yet because right after that, I just airbrushed in the Demon Red to make the power gems look like they were powering the scarabs and giving off a little bit of light. I did this on the big gem on the back and on the one in the faceplate area. And I think it does give off the effect that I wanted pretty well. Once everything was sprayed with the airbrush, I, you know, did a full cleaning of it. Then I grabbed my brush and I started on the details. Once I was done with all that, I used Cercote Silver on the joints of the legs to make them kind of pop out a bit. Using Demon Red, I highlighted the edge of the armor surrounding the gem in the middle of the back. I also put another layer of Demon Red all over the gem because it felt like it was still a little too dark. I wanted to brighten it up a little bit more. Then I did a little bit of edge highlighting. Basically down the tops of the legs, I did just a strip of Demon Red to give it a little bit more of like a lightness compared to the Sanguine Scarlet and the Berserker Red. I did also do the same thing that I did with the gems on the destroyers of mixing in demon red with a little bit of white star and painting it on the gems and then giving it a dot of white close to the center or just like offset from the center so that it would just, you know, give it a little bit more of a visual pop there along with the Cercote silver. And this is where the models are currently at. I was going to initially leave the vent section as red but i decided it would look better and would stand out a little bit more with Cercote silver as the kind of the base layer there i don't think i'll do any demon red highlighting like i've done with the other vent sections because there's already enough red and they're already small models so i don't think i'll do that i'll just leave it Cercote silver and i'm going to clean up the sides next to the vents with sanguine scarlet now let's start working on the warlord for this combat patrol which is the overlord compared to something like the warriors or the destroyers i think there's a lot more to the overlord there's a lot of areas that i'm not sure the airbrush will reach well so most of the painting on this model will be done with a brush more specifically a number two and double zero wolf bristle brush from chronicle cards these are the brushes i've been using for most of my painting for this set well most of my painting in general i'll be starting off as i did with the other standing models in this combat patrol using berserker red to paint the chest slash rib armor I had to work around his decorative chain tassel things that are hanging off of his neck and the chest guard in the center, which was a tiny bit annoying, but I got it all painted. Then I decided to paint the back of the metal loincloth armor thing that's hanging between his legs. <laughs> Dick joke. <laughs> and the inside of his legs with Berserker Red also for the more shadowed areas from the Zenithil highlight. Once all of those were done, I moved on to the mid-tone base coat with, you guessed it, Sanguine Scarlet. And there's a lot of it. Starting with the large shoulder pads, I base coated all of them up to where it meets the Berserker Red at the bottom. I also tried to avoid getting paint on the large gem ball things on the shoulders for now. Once I had the shoulders finished, I moved on to base coating the blade of the Hyperphase Glaive, which 
fairly easy, you know, just base coated both sides of the blade with the Sanguine Scarlet. Then I decided to paint the flat part that was sticking out of the back of the glaive and the crest on top of the Overlord's head. Just, you know, a couple of small areas. After that, it's on to the armor on the arms. Starting with the Tachyon arrow side, I painted up the armor on the upper arm, then the actual Tachyon arrow weapon's large flat sides and handle, and I finished off with the bracer thing that has the wire connected to it going up to his shoulder armor. Once I was done with that arm, I switched to the other and painted the armor on that arm. The upper arm, the lower arm, and the back of the hand all got covered in Sanguine Scarlet. Then I had an idea. I didn't know what I was going to do for the shaft of the Hyperface Glaive. <laughs> shaft. But I decided I was going to do an alternating pattern on it. Starting with the blade on the bottom of the shaft, I painted that in Sanguine Scarlet, and then every other loop on the weapon shaft. <laughs> Giggity. <laughs> Sorry, I'm five years old, is painted the same way. Just a wrap of Sanguine Scarlet around it. Now I move on to the legs and the feet. I tried to not paint over the areas that I put Berserker Red on the inside of the legs while painting the feet and leg armor. I tried to blend them a little bit, but because they're on the inside of the legs and hidden by the rest of the body, I wasn't too concerned with it. For the finishing touches with the Sanguine Scarlet, I painted the front of the metal loincloth armor thing in between his legs. Then I went back with some Berserker Red, and I decided to try and put it into the background of the neck guard area and the center crest, so that then I could come back and paint the raised areas with Sir Cote Silver, which begins the next step, painting all of the exposed metal areas with Sir Cote Silver. I started with the skull and the base of the crest on his head then moved on to the inner part of the neck and the neck guard. I tried to paint the symbols by just lightly brushing over the top of them and hitting just the raised edges. I think it kind of worked, but it's it looks a little bit messy. Then I started working on the Tachyon Arrows metal bits. The shoulder joint, the elbow joint, the inside of the bracer section that's cut out on the outside there, and the exposed hand and arm that holds it underneath, along with like the arrow tip and the metal sections at the corners are what I painted up on there. Once that was done, I quickly painted like the tubes and wires inside of the Overlord's chest, then started on the hyperphase glaive side, starting with the shoulder and elbow joints, and then moving onto the exposed metal on the forearm and the hand. Then I moved to the actual weapon. I painted a couple of the connecting bits with Sir Cote Silver, and then started to paint the weapon shaft in between the bits of Sanguine Scarlet that were on there. Once most of the shaft was done, I moved on to painting the wires that are connecting the glaive to the Overlord's back. After I finished that wire bit, I finished up all of the exposed metal areas on the weapon. The engine looking area and the bulges next to it, along with the last bit of exposed metal loops above the hand. Once I finished all that, I moved on to the legs, hip joints, knee joints, the exposed area of metal above the ankle, and the ankle joint, as well as the toes. Then I worked on the ceremonial tassels, or whatever those things are that are hanging from the neck guard. I base coated them in Cote silver all the way around, and the last two bits that needed silver were the connecting, the wire connecting the Necron to the Tachyon arrow, arm, and the spikes from the spine. I quickly base coated all of these bits with silver, and then I was done with my base coating. Okay, mostly done with the base coating. Because while I was working on the Cercote silver sections, I changed my mind about a few spots on the model that I wanted to paint differently. They were going to be Cercote silver, but then I decided to change them to Sanguine Scarlet. I was going to paint the top of the glaive shaft silver, but then decided on going with Sanguine Scarlet instead. So I quickly painted that up along with the part above the engine on the glaive that connects to the upper tube. I basically, the area around the engine, I made Sanguine Scarlet instead. And that's kind of the final bit that I decided on changing was that area around the metal engine part on the glaive. I went with Sanguine Scarlet there to tie it all together and kind of pop the silver a little bit more. The same goes for the symbol on the weapon. I tried to paint the background in with Sanguine Scarlet to make the silver on the symbol pop a little more. Speaking of popping, the next step is doing the very little airbrushing I'm planning on doing with this model. I'll be airbrushing Demon Red onto the normal areas that I've done with other models, and that's the gems, power sources, and vents on the model. The gems on the shoulders and tachyon arrow, along with the orb on the top of the glaive and the vent 
damage area on the weapon. I'll get this demon red. I also did some on the normal areas of power highlights, like the face around the eyes and the chest vents. The chest stuff I didn't think worked out super well, but I, I'll do a little bit of touch up on them. Then it's time for more brush work with that same demon red. I swear, we're getting close to done. This model's being a little bit complicated, but we're getting close to done. I want to add a little bit more of the demon red to the Tachyon Arrows gem and a little bit to the vents on the chest. Then I started to paint the circles on the tassel things that hang from the neck guard so that it doesn't all just look like silver and it gives it a little bit of a pop of color. Once that was finished, I moved on to the major highlight areas, starting with the shoulder armor. At first, I edge highlighted around the power gems on the shoulders, and then I painted the tops of the curved armor behind the head and started to paint the shoulder armor. I tried to make it very demon red at the front and top of the shoulders, but then kind of, you know, fade it down as I worked it towards the back so that it would blend better with the Sanguine Scarlet. By doing multiple little strokes from the front towards the back, I was able to get this effect on one side, but I kind of had a mind fart in the middle of it and I just didn't do this with the other side. I don't know why I didn't do it with the other side, but I just stopped and made a hard cutoff line there. After finishing up the shoulder armor, I started to edge highlight a little bit on the tachyon arrow side of the model. Then I wanted to work some of the lighting effect that I was going for by pulling paint away from the gem on the tachyon arrow gauntlet. Once that was done, I put another coat of paint on the tassels to make them pop out a little bit more because the demon red was looking kind of dull to me there. I did a little bit more edge highlighting on the crest of the head and then started working on some of the more lighting volume type areas. But first I painted the tube on the back of the weapon with demon red. Then I started to work on areas that would, you know, be exposed towards the sky, like the back of the leg that's sticking out, the top edges of the feet, and the top of the bottom blade on the weapon. I also gave the bottom blade the same cutting edge treatment that I've given all the other blades in this series. Demon red on the cutting edge so it differentiates the spine and the edge of the blade. Then I moved on to doing the same for the main blade of the hyperphase glaive on both sides. Once I was done with that, I did a little bit more highlighting on the arms and the back part of the blade along with the glaive shaft and the tops of the legs. As the final touches, I used the demon red to paint the tubes that connect the weapons to the Overlord's main body. I did miss one tube at this point though and didn't notice it till after this next step. For each of the power gems, I combined demon red and white star together for a slightly desaturated looking red and painted the center area of all the gems with it. Tachyon arrow gem, the shoulder gems, and the orb on the back of the glaive all got this treatment, as well as the tubes that I had already painted with demon red. They got this treatment on the higher, more exposed sides, basically the tops of them. Then I came in with some pure white star and put a little bit of a highlight in the center-ish of each gem and a dot for the eyes. After that, I grabbed some mithril blade, which is the highlight for Circote's silver line, and just highlighted all the upward facing silver areas. The top of the head and the neck, the tips and tops of the spine on the back, the top and outer part of the hand on the glaive, the sigils on the chest, the tops of the joints, and the tops of the wires were all given a light painting of this mithril blade. This is the time when I realized that I hadn't painted the tube that goes from the body of the overlord to the tachyon arrow arm, and I quickly corrected that mistake and gave it the same treatment as all the other tubes with demon red and then the combination of demon red and white star on it. While writing the script for this video though, I noticed something that I missed and had to quickly go and correct. I hadn't put the wash slash panel lining on the weapon like I did with the destroyers, but I have since corrected that and I just used the acrylic ink that I have along with some water to make a sort of wash and get it into the crevice on the weapons. And that is this guy and the scarabs done. Well, until I decided to do basic which should be in the final video of this Necron Combat Patrol series. I hope you all are enjoying this series as much as I am painting these models. And if you are, please do all the algorithm stuff. Leave a comment on what you think of my paint scheme or how I could improve my ways of doing stuff on these models. But most importantly, I hope you have a royal day or a royal night and you're ready for those final sexy shots.